Green Hornets, Little Zephyrs, and Multis, the BMT's love affair with open gangways and futuristic equipment, coming up. In this video, we will discuss the multiple section cars of the BMT, beginning with the experimental Green Hornet and Little Zephyr, and moving on to the production models, which were called the Multis. For more information on the background and history of the Brooklyn Manhattan Transit Corporation, or BMT, see my other video on the rise and fall of the BMT. Our story begins in 1933 with the introduction of a streamlined, lightweight, three-car articulated railroad train built by Pullman for the Union Pacific. Called the M-10,000, its goal was to provide faster and more comfortable service. Other railroads like the design and the Illinois Central soon ordered its own version called the Green Diamond. At the same time, the BMT was interested in modernizing its fleet in particular, finding a way to replace its elevated fleet and proving to the city that elevated lines were viable, thereby aiding its negotiating position. The city was negotiating to buy out the private operators, so improving service was one way that the company could increase the value that it could obtain for its shareholders. Another factor in the decision was that the elevated fleet of wooden cars was labor-intensive, so the company could reduce operating costs while at the same time increasing ridership with more attractive, comfortable, and faster cars. In 1934, the BMT ordered two prototypes. The first to be delivered was a five-car articulated unit made of aluminum by the Pullman Company called the Green Hornet, thanks to its green color. In terms of weight, the car weighed only 823 pounds per linear foot, while the BMT's standard steel subway car weighed 1,268 pounds per linear foot, a reduction of about 50%. These cars could cover the entire length of the Fulton Street Elevated in 36 minutes, including all station stops, compared to the existing cars that required 49 minutes to make the same run. Some of the features that were ahead of their time included combined dynamic and straight air braking controlled by a separate brake stand, Acceleration was provided by a newly developed Westinghouse Series Parallel Rotary Accelerator, making these cars fast and smoothly accelerating. The brochure mentions air conditioning, but we should note that in the context of these cars, air conditioning was merely forced air as opposed to ceiling fans. Roll signs were replaced by a carousel of metal signs that were controlled by the operator so that the destination could be changed from the cab. Today it is done electronically, but the concept is the same. The train operator sets the signs for the entire train. The cars introduced chimes when the doors closed, a feature that would not return to the subway until 1971 with the introduction of the R44 type subway cars and is standard today. Note the sloping sides of the car body that is a feature that is seen on all modern subway cars as well. Pullman's primary competitor in the streamliner business was the Bud Company. Their entry was a car made from stainless steel that resembled the Zephyr that they had built for the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. Dubbed the Little Zephyr, the car body was welded into a shell of thin, light stainless steel as opposed to the riveted heavy steel used previously. This was the first time that stainless steel would be used to manufacture transit cars. The braking system used eddy current electric braking, which did not require the application of brake shoes, making for smoother and quieter braking. Like the Green Hornet, it also used automated signs, but did not include the chimes. Both the Green Hornet and Little Zephyr introduced full-width cabs, something that is becoming standard once again in the subway system, to the lament of most rail fans who miss the so-called rail fan window, that is, being able to look out the front of the train. Stainless steel cars would not return to New York until the introduction of the Bud R11 type in 1949, 
and would become the uh, regularly used material after the introduction of the Bud R32 types in 1964. The Green Hornet and Little Zephyr were essentially concept cars. In 1935, the BMT Order 25 multi-section five-car units. Pullman won the contract to build 15 of the units, and the contract for the other 10 went to the St. Louis Car Company. Bud and its stainless steel concept lost. The production cars lost some of their futuristic appointments, instead going back to more traditional designs. Rattan seating was used instead of leather, the front windows were more like the D-type triplex units, and the roof line still had a deck-like, albeit more streamlined look. Innovations that were kept included the automated sign boxes, improved acceleration and braking, and a full-width cab. They were known for their rapid acceleration and speed, which saved money as fewer trains were needed to be operated. For example, on a Saturday, only five trains covered the 14th Street Canarsie Line, today's L Line. The speed differences between the multis, as they were called, and the standard BMT subway cars also allowed for unique express service to be operated on the two-track 14th Street Line between Lorimer Street and Myrtle Avenue. An express, consisting of BMT standards, would follow the local, consisting of the faster multis. By the time the local reached the terminal, the express would be right behind it, effectively increasing capacity on the line. Looking at the design of the car, it is also interesting to note how similar the roof line looked to the R10 type cars that would be produced by the City of New York in 1948. In 1939, the BMT followed up with these innovations in a completely futuristic concept called the Bluebird. If you have not seen it yet, please watch my video about that unique car. Sadly, in 1940, the BMT was taken over by the city of New York, and innovation and experimentation gave way to standardization. We will never know how advanced rapid transit car design could have come had they remained in business. None of these cars survived. In 1943, the Green Hornet was the first to be scrapped, since it contained aluminum which was vital to the war effort. The Little Zephyr remained in service until 1954 and was finally scrapped in 1958. The other multi-section cars remained in service until 1961. A note about the future of this channel and the direction I am taking. You may have noticed that the intro has changed. That is because in addition to my historical documentaries, I am making trips to various locations and will be filming railroads as well. I hope to make more transit videos if the vintage train operations resume after the pandemic subsides. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel.